Welcome to today's lesson, which is about All Saints Day. We're going to begin, as always, with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All Saints Day, also known as All Hallows Day, the Feast of All Saints, the Feast of All Hallows, the Solemnity of All Saints, and Hallowmas is a Christian solemnity, which is a feast day of the highest rank, celebrated in honor of all the saints of the church. And saints are a person who is recognized as having an exceptional degree of holiness or closeness to God. And All Saints Day is about the saints, whether they are known or unknown. And from the fourth century feast, commemorating all Christian martyrs, and a martyr is a person who was killed for their testimony for Jesus, these feasts were held in various places on various dates near Easter or Pentecost. In the 9th century, some churches in the British Isles began holding the commemoration of All Saints on November 1st and in the 9th century. This was extended to the whole Catholic Church by Pope Gregory IV, who was the Bishop of Rome and ruler of the Papal States from 827 until his death. In Western Christianity, it is still celebrated on the 1st of November by the Roman Catholic Church, as well as many Protestant churches. The Eastern Orthodox Church and associated Eastern Catholic and Eastern Lutheran churches celebrated on the first Sunday after Pentecost. The Syro Malabar Church, which is also known as the Syro Malabar Catholic Church, is an Eastern church based in Kerala, India. So it is basically the Catholic Church in India. And the Chaldean Catholic Church, both of which are in communion with Rome, as well as the Church of the East, they all celebrate All Saints Day on the first Friday after Easter Sunday. In the Coptic Orthodox tradition, and Coptics are uh, mostly based in Egypt, All Saints Day is on Naruz, which is celebrated on the 11th of September. The day is the start of the Coptic New Year, and it's the first month of Thout and Thout also known as Tut, is the first month of the ancient Egyptian and Coptic calendars. Now let's talk a little bit about liturgical celebrations around All Saints Day. In the Western Christian practice, the liturgical celebration begins with its first Vespers, and Vespers is a liturgy of evening prayer. And that begins on the 31st of October, which is also known as All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Eve, or Halloween, and ends at Compline, which is night prayer or prayers at the end of the day, on the 1st of November. It is thus the day before All Souls' Day, which commemorates the faithfully departed. In many traditions, All Saints' Day is part of the season of All Hallow Tide, which includes three days from the 31st of October to the 2nd of November inclusive. And in some denominations, such as Anglicanism, it extends to Remembrance Sunday. In places where All Saints' Day is observed as a public holiday, but All Souls' Day is not, cemetery and grave rituals, such as offering of flowers, candles, and prayers, or blessings for the graves of loved ones, often take place on All Saints' Day. In Austria and Germany, godparents gift their godchildren All Saints' Braid, which looks like this. And it is a braided yeast pastry, which has flour, eggs, yeast, shortening butter, raisins, milk, salt, and it is decorated with sugar and poppy seeds. It looks very delicious. And in Portugal, a practice named souling is very popular. And souling is when you give someone a soul cake, which is a small round cake with sweet spices, and it resembles a shortbread biscuit. All Saints Day is a national holiday in many Christian countries. The Christian celebration of All Saints Day and All Souls Day stems from a belief that there is a powerful spiritual bond between those in heaven, the church triumph triumphant, the living, the church militant, and the church penitent, which includes those uh, faithful departed who are in purgatory, who need to be purified but will eventually get into heaven. In Catholic theology, the day commemorates all those who have attained the beatific vision in heaven, and the beatific vision is the ultimate self-communication with God. A person possessing the beatific vision has reached communion with God and perfect salvation in heaven. So the beatific vision is our ultimate goal as Catholics. So 
All Saints Day commemorates those who have the beatific vision at this time. Moving on. Such individuals throughout the church universal are honored, such as Paul the Apostle, Augustine of Hippo, and many other saints, varying according to the hagiographic traditions of the church in question. And a hagiography is a biography of a saint. In some traditions, the day is also used to celebrate individuals who have personally led one to faith in Jesus, such as one grandmother or friend. And that is All Saints Day in a nutshell. It is basically a Christian solemnity celebrated in honor of all the saints of the church, whether they are known or, uh, or unknown. And it has been going on since at least the fourth century, where it was first commemorating all the Christian martyrs. And then it went on to add everyone who had died in the faith. And that is All Saints Day. Uh, in a nutshell, as I said before, thanks for learning with us. We're going to learn a little bit more about All Saints Day in the next two lessons. So please check those out. And until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.